happy Thursday morning. Welcome to the Oak and Lamb YouTube channel. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. Rachel's looking at this light like she wants me to fix it, so I'm going to do that for her. Um, Thanks. The other voice you do hear is Rachel Langston. She's also an owner and craft educator here. We are glad you're here. If this is your first time, let us know. We want to give you a shout out. The lighting does look weird, Rachel. You I, are correct. I know. Uh, but anyway, we want to give you a shout out. We love crafting here. We love making new crafty friends. And if you want to be our new friend, let us know. We like friends. We like new friends. We do. We like old friends. Um, speaking of old friends, welcome. Welcome Kat and Kathy and Sandy and Christy and Linda and Christy and Twyla and so many friends, 29 of you here. Um, at the beginning I said, there's 17, Rachel. How will you keep up with the comments? I don't even know. I don't even know. She's so good. We are going to make our fun little felt project that I had scheduled for last Thursday, but canned to embarrass, well, not embarrass Rachel, just surprise her a little bit. That was like the sweetest, most unexpected. Like Becca got me good with that. Well, you know. That was the sweetest. You know. And, and she has her framed photo on her desk over there. Like she's really proud of it. Or she wants me to think she's proud of it. I don't know. Well, it stays here, don't it? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm very proud of it. It's okay. I've already ordered you a massive one. Oh, perfect. Like, Huge. Like poster size or bigger? Oh, your wall. The whole wall. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. For sure. Love it. Anyway, we're making that today. So today's project, we are going to be using Benzie Felt, B-E-N-Z-I-E. -E. If I know Rachel, it's already linked below. Mm -hmm. We love Benzie Felt, and we are going to be cutting it with our maker and our rotary blade. We do have a hack for cutting this felt with your Explore Series machine and freezer paper. So if you have an Explore Series machine and want to create a project like this, check out the video that we have here on the YouTube channel. If you can't find it, let us know. We can link it for you. Um, but so yeah, we have felt. I have two colors of felt. Guys, I wish, I need to look this one up. This color green, I don't know if you can tell if it translates really well. In person, it is like the perfect green color. Becca loves green. I think I need to buy a few yards of this. I'm pretty sure this is the only one we have left in there. So if this is a craft fail and something happens, like it moves on my mat or something and I have to cut a different piece, It'll be real sad. Yeah. It'll be really sad. So I have this really pretty green color, this mustardy color. I am using a teeny tiny dowel rod, some butcher's twine. This is just to put it in there and hang it, all that fun stuff. Um, and I'm going to be using a sewing machine. And one reason that I like, I, I've mentioned this before, one reason that I like to work with felt, particularly in the sense of a beginner sewing project, is that it doesn't fray on you. It's really, it's a really good thickness, a really good texture. Your machine doesn't eat it. It, it, it like doesn't move on you. Uh, it, it's just really, really easy to work with. And another cool thing about it, especially with this type of flag that we're making, if you made it out of duck canvas or a cotton fabric or something like that, you would need to roll the hem or roll the edges and do a hem on it so that it doesn't have a fraying edge. You don't have to do that here with felt. So I feel like it's a really good beginner project, a really good beginner sewing project as well. Um, so I'm going to be making the flag. I'm going to be using an Oakley Lamb cut file that's not on the website yet. I've got to get my stuff together uh, and get these on the website before I actually use them. But it's a really cute uh, file. I'll put it on there today for you. Rachel, remind me to put it on there. Yes, ma'am. It's called Trophy Wife, and it's a trophy, and it says Trophy Wife, and at the very bottom it says, but like a participation trophy, which is where <laughs> I am in life right now. Um, so we're going to be using that file. We're going to be creating an offset. We're going to be creating the banner in Design Space. I'm going to show you how easy it is to use des uh, basic shapes in Design Space to create your own blanks. A blank is a blank. Like the item that you're going to, the yeah. item you're going to be yeah. decorating and making. So we we're have about that. Heidi here. It's her very first live with Hi, us. Heidi, welcome. Hi. We're so excited that you're here with us live. Um, it's morning, Joanna's. Stacey. Joanna's. Sorry if I, Johanna. Joanna's first time first here. First one as well. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Watching on my phone is so small. Yes, Jen, you need us huge, like a big projector on your wall. That would be fun, right? Maybe you could see my pores. My rosacea that I've not covered up today. Stop. I finally got diagnosed with rosacea, by the way. 
not that it was like a fight to do that, but I, for whatever reason, my dermatologist has never been like, hey, you want something for your rosacea? So I went in a couple of weeks ago for a full body mole check. Side note, wear sunscreen, get, get body checks for moles. Anyway, uh, while I was there doing that, she was like, have you ever done anything for your rosacea? I'm like, no, give me the stuff. So I'm excited. I can't really tell that it's doing anything, but we'll see. Okay. Um, it might take like weeks to see. A well, difference. and she said, she said, this one is not my favorite. There are medications that are better, but your insurance is more likely to pay for them. If you try this one and it's not successful. And ah. I want to be like, look lady, my insurance is really good. Let's just go for the big dog. Yeah, Let's go for broke there. Let's do it. They'll pay everything. Everything. Literally. There's only one prescription that we pay for in our entire family and it's $25 a quarter. Which is amazing. Yeah. Anyway, God, so many squirrely side notes there. Are That's there any questions, comments, anything we need to address before we jump into this project? Let me know. Before we jump in, I do want to share with you that we are still running a fun special on our membership here at Oak and Lamb. It is $20 off using the code 20 off 20 OFF. You get your first year of membership here for $179, which breakdown makes it, what is that? You better not be asking me. I don't know. I don't have my calculator up. That's awful. You don't have a calculator next to your measuring tape in your pocket constantly? Oh, you're being serious. No, I don't. <laughs> oh, oh, you're being serious. Uh, $14.91, $0.92, cents, so Whoa. less than $15 per month. So it's a really great discount when you break it down that way. Um, but the cool, cool thing about this promotion is that it is a grandfathered rate, meaning that each year your membership renews, it will auto-renew at that discounted price too. So um, join the membership if you like this cut file, if you like our teaching styles, if you like our banter, if you like our community, you need to become an official member of the flock to get access to all of the benefits that we have. Spiel done. Diana, Let's craft. Diana said, I saw some velvet heat transfer vinyl and she would like a tutorial. Send us a link to the product you're talking about, Diana. Hello at oakandlamb.com. I'll take a look at it. If we love it, we'd love to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay. Let's craft. First, I am going to show you some design space. So Miss Rachel is going to take a lovely photo of my head over hang on, hang like on. This. oh dear god wait till you see it's this so, later Becca. it's so good You're did you get a die. did you get a good yep <laughs> um and then we're, we're gonna plug in here <coughs> we've really got to order why do we I mean, we just have not ordered another hdmi cable <laughs> what is wrong with us <laughs> Okay, so over in design space, let me put my uh, computer on do not disturb before someone texts me something and really embarrasses me live. Um, here we go. The pieces of felt that we are working with, now you can get different size pieces of felt from Benzie, but we normally get the, well, we always do, get the color palette options, which are 12 by nine inches. So this is going to be a smaller banner, which is one reason why I'm excited that I don't have to roll the hem so that I'm not losing a quarter to half an inch all the way around um, by having to hem it. So the finished product, finished banner needs to fit in that nine by 12 and it actually needs to fit by an eight and a half by 11 and a half because that's how Design Space is going to make me cut it. So I want my banner to be this shape right here with the cute little thingy at the bottom right here. If you want a really, really, really simple banner, just grab a basic shape over here in design space. You could do the rounded corner one if you wanted to, um, or, you know, your right angled one if you wanted to and size this, you're going to size it, unlock your size lock ratio. Like I said, it needs to be 8.5 inches maximum in width. And then you would make it like 11.5 inches maximum in height. So you could do your banner like this. Now you are going to have a rod pocket. So part of this will be folded over and you're going to lose some of the height here because you have to have the, ro the rod pocket if you're going to be hanging a rod. Now, the rod that I'm using is like a quarter of an inch. So I don't have to have a huge rod pocket by any means. I mean, I could get, I could get away with like an inch 
total. So make it like, this would be one inch high. Let's change the color so we can see. I, I'm a visual person, so I have to do things like this. Uh, we'll make it nine inches. No, go back. So this would be, this is a representation of where our rod pocket, uh, the, the amount of space our rod pocket is gonna take up. So this right here is the space that we would have left for the design. Now, let's delete that one because we're not using that. I was just showing you an easy for instance. And instead, we are going to create this. So what I did was just, again, grab another square, and I wanted to make this 8.5 inches in width and height momentarily. And then I took a triangle from, where is it, right here? Oh, wanted to point out, there is this one right here. This is included um, in the Access membership. If you do not have access, I have created all of these files as files on um, the Oak and Lamb website. In fact, let's look really quickly. You can see them on here. I think it's under shape. I'm not even, I don't even have to log in because it'll, it'll come up. Let's see here. Shape. We've tried to put all sorts of taglines. Yeah, okay. So beyond basic shapes. We have all of these right here. You can see that's in one file. One file for you all. Look at that. All of that. So Beck is the best. Get the membership. You don't need access. You need the Oak and Land membership. Anyway, so that's there. So many squirrels today. Why is my brain doing this? <laughs> hey, it's all good squirrels. <laughs> okay, let's grab a triangle like I mentioned before I got sidetracked. And I want to rotate this triangle so that the point is on the bottom. Now, I can rotate it like this and just kind of... It, it's nice because it has the degree up there, so you, you know exactly when it gets to 180 degrees. But um, I can also hold in my shift button. When I have this selected, and I have the little arrow thingy that shows me I'm gonna be able to rotate it, if I hold in shift, then it will kind of lock in and help me rotate this in a controlled way to 180 degrees. Now, the other thing that you can do come up here under rotate and change it if you know what degree you want it. So there's so many different ways to do things here in design space. Uh, I like to, to uh, what's likely gonna happen is that you're gonna find one way that you like to do it and you're gonna do that over and over again and forget that there are three ways to rotate your image. So to make this the correct size, I'm going to just leave that size lock ratio intact and I'm going to make the width 8.5 inches so that it's the same width as my square. Okay. And then I know that I want this to be kind of squatty. So now I'm going to unlock the size lock ratio and I'm going to make the height like three inches and we'll see if we like that. You can make it even squattier if you wanted to, or longer, it's just depending on uh, what, what you like. And I'm not going to weld this together or unite this quite yet because I want to select both of the pieces and see what the height is. So right now we're at 11.5 inches, which is actually the exact height that we need um, in order to cut this out perfectly. If you had a longer piece and maybe wanted this longer, then you could at this point come up and make this part longer. Um, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to delete this. Let's rid of this here. We'll move this over. And select both of these. And now I, because I like the height and the width and all that stuff, now I can weld this together or unite it either way. Uh, weld is, if you don't know, more permanent, meaning if I weld and go on and in five steps decide that I, I wanted to change the height of this or something like that uh, without changing the height of the triangle part, so if I just needed to change this, then I'm kind of SOL. If I unite it, then I can do several steps, move these around, change them around, do whatever, and always come back 
to undo that unite. So all I have to do is press un undo unite. If these terms and this type of uh, education in design space is foreign to you or confusing to you, we have an entire program included in our membership that will break all of this down beautifully for you. We have a free printable handbook that's included with that course and it has all the terminology included in it and we have videos for literally everything that you need in order to learn design space. So if you're new to Cricut Design Space, if you're new to Cricuting, grab our membership, grab that course. It is an amazing course. Okay, now that that is united, I took this, I decided that I wanted my rod pocket to be 1.5 inches finished. So, um, I, let's see here. That one make it three inches tall. I think, well, maybe I don't want it 1.5. Hold on, let me measure this again. Maybe I want it 2.5 total and then I'll fold it in half. Yeah, let's do, I think we'll leave it like it was. I want it to be 1.75 finished. So I made this 2.5 inch rectangle because this is what is going to be taken up. Let's bring this to the front. This much of my flag is going to be taken up with my rod pocket. So technically, it's going to look more like from here down finished because this top part will be folded over and sewn. I'm trying to just, I'm trying to break this down for those of you who are new to sewing and don't know. So many of you are probably like, yeah, obviously let's move on. But we have some friends who maybe this is their first time doing this. So that's why I really wanted to, to stress this. Okay, so I have this covered up, which means this right here is going to be where I put my image. Now this is the file that we're using trophy wife. So fun. The cool thing about this is if I just wanted to use the trophy, I can do that. Like if I wanted to use this as an award something for, for kids or whatever, then I can do that. The other cool thing about files like this is that you can contour this. If you don't just want this to be an outline, you can contour this, hide all the contours. And then it's like the outline of a trophy, which is cool. Right. Or be even more specific and like leave this part out. So oh. like, there's all different things you can do with cut files. Yeah. Really cool. Um, let's go back because I want all of this. So what I want to do is just size this file right here kind of loosely where I want it here. Bring it to the front. And I'm going to be creating an offset of this so that the offset is cut from fail and then this right here is cut from heat transfer vinyl. So to create the offset, I have the entire image selected and I'm gonna come up to offset and you can use this little draggy thingy to make it bigger or you can do an inset, but we're not doing that today. How, at whatever size you want your offset, I like to do about um, a quarter of an inch bigger. So we'll press apply and I'm gonna move this over. So because I only did a quarter of an inch, I still have some of this that hasn't, it doesn't meet. Now, if I had done like a half an inch or even probably 0.35 inches or something like that, it probably would meet, but um, I didn't want it any bigger. So now what I have to do is select this offset, come down to contour, and then again, hide all contours and it will get rid, it will fill in those pieces. Let's change the color of this to yellow because that's what color we're going to be using. Change this to green. And then we can center this up by selecting both align and center, which will center it both vertically and horizontally. And then we can bring it over here and make sure that this is going to fit nicely on our finished banner. And it looks really good. Um, so let's delete this part because we're not actually going to be needing that. And I need to make sure that I have my Cricut Maker selected. And we'll go ahead and click Make It. This looks pretty good. So there is our 
Long felt piece, small felt piece. Oh, rookie mistake here. Rookie mistake. Oh, Becca. Because that was three different layers, I made it three different layers so that you could easily manipulate this file and do different things with How it. How long have you been doing this, I know, Becca? Right? I know, right? <laughs> the important part is that I noticed before I cut it. Oh, gosh, so true. <laughs> yeah. So because that was three separate layers and I didn't attach it or weld it together, it wants to place it in separate pieces on my cutting mat. So we can come back over here and press attach, or we could have pressed weld, or we could, could have pressed unite. Any of those actions will make it stay together. Grouping it alone will not make it stay together on the mat. So attach, weld, or unite will get you exactly what you want there. Now, while I'm on this screen, let's go ahead and mirror this image because we are going to be cutting this out of heat transfer vinyl and you will need to mirror your heat transfer vinyl. I don't need to mirror this one. I don't need to mirror this one. All of these look good. So let's go ahead and press continue. And we'll connect to our maker and we're going to select iron on as our first material. Set the base material, everyday iron on. Fine point blade needs to be loaded. So that's what we're gonna do. We'll go ahead and load this. This is a basically brand new light grip Nikapa mat. Rachel opened it Tuesday. Do they need to see anything else in Design Space? Mm, no. The only other thing in Design Space that I will do is change out my rotary blade and change my material setting, but I don't think you all need to see that. Um, so let's go ahead and put our piece of iron on. I just got my nails done today and they're shorter than normal, which I actually appreciate, but I can't get this tape off. I can't stand my nails getting long. Me either. And I break them so easily yeah. when they're long. Yeah. That's a perfect color, Becca. Thank you. I love it. Okay. I'm referring back to design space. This is roughly six and a half inches by seven and a half just want to make sure that I'm cutting the correct amount. I have also linked the Air HTV down below. We love to get the bulk rolls from 143 Vinyl. What brand of vinyl do we love, Rachel? The, well, this HTV is Caesar Easy Weed. That is what we like. It's the best. I'm putting my vinyl shiny side down so that I can make sure that it cuts properly. How many of you all, I've done this so many times, especially when I first started. I remember one project in particular, I put it shiny side up, cut it, dang it, put it back down, shiny side up, cut it. Yeah. It was three times. Yeah. Three times. Like, so if that is you, don't feel bad. I used to do the uh, glitter HTV on the regular HTV setting. Oh. I would do that all the time. I get, yeah. You would think it wouldn't make that much of a difference, but it really, I mean, it really does. Yeah. It honestly does. Okay, so we're cutting that out. Let me look at comments while that cuts out. It shouldn't take too, too, too long. Melissa really likes your short nails. Thank you. I like them as well. No, I make those rookie mistakes all the time. Again, the important part... You is, catch them before you cut it. You have like, a, like in my mind, I have a checklist. I always, you always need to look at those mats before. It is important not to skip that step. I think a lot of times when we get into make, making projects, the temptation is to just speed through that because you know what you're doing, you've done it, but that's when you catch your mistakes. Yeah, it's true. Um, I wanted to get nails again, but I know they will drive me nuts because my hands are always dirty. I have dirty hands too, cat. Yeah. In fact, this weekend, uh, we got some uh, peony bushes, right, because they're like my favorite thing ever. And they'd sat there for a couple of days to be planted. I was going to put them in pots on my front porch and planters. Wayne was like, why don't you do that, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I, I don't want to get my hands dirty, Wayne. Like Potting soil. And he was yeah. like, really? I said, I'll pressure wash the house and mow the front yard if you all plant those Got a barter. He's like, really? Got a barter yeah. with him. Did he take the deal? Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. he ended up mowing because you know my track record with mowing. That's, yeah. That was probably. But I did pressure wash the house. Yes. My Oh, my gosh. 
So we have this covered porch on our front deck and that's, it, the front of our house is what always looks the worst. So I had to pressure wash it, but I'm doing the top of it and it's so, it's not really tall. So my neck is literally like this the whole time. It killed my neck. I bet neck. it did. I bet it did. I find if I mark the back of my mat with the date that I put it into service, it really helps. Helps what? Did I miss some comments? I don't know. I think she's just talking about the use of mats, like when she needs to clean them. See, that doesn't really help me because, like, the frequency in which I use specific mats or specific materials is so differing. Um, that doesn't help me. We have so many mats. We have so many. Now, we did get, even get rid of some, but we still have so many mats. I used a new blade on this morning on Rose Gold HTV. Never do that when you're working on a hurry up and do it project. Got it done, but man, mm -mm. that will get you every time, won't it, Kat? Every time. What are you doing this weekend for Mother's Day, Rachel? We're going to the farm per usual for all You've the holidays. You've never invited me to the farm. I, I'm gonna make a whole list. You've never invited me to the farm. You've, You've never, never made me warm banana, banana pudding. pudding. You have, I feel like there was another one I was harboring bitterness over and now I can't remember. I'm sure you'll think of it. I'm sure you'll think I've of it. I've never spent a holiday with you. You can spend all my holidays We're with like, me. You can spend all of the holidays with me. We're going there and then we're compiling all the May birthdays. So Are like, you going to have banana pudding? I don't, I don't know. I've been instructed to make cupcakes. Text me while being this girl. I'll, okay. I'll make them. I'll say, are you, are you making banana pudding? Because Becca's Becca's requesting gonna, banana pudding from Mother's Day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I am going to weed this. And I want that mat. I wasn't really thinking. What so are I'm, you doing for Mother's Day? Nothing, not a thing. Wow. It's my favorite. Sounds amazing. Actually, I don't, I really don't know. I have no idea. I'm putting this on a different mat because I like to weed on a mat and I wanted to use this mat for my felt. So, changing it over. I'm going to choose my felt material setting. And the felt material setting I use is the wool fabric felt. We say this every time because if you have never watched a video, we need to say it every time. For whatever reason, it wants you to use the fine point blade as your cutting t tool. Yeah. You cannot use the fine point blade with un... Um, bonded. Thank you. Bonded Benzie felt. You can't. It won't work. So change it. Change it to the rotary blade. You're going to have a beautiful cut if you do that. I'm gonna place this little guy down here. And because this is a light grip mat, so many of you are probably like, why is she not using a fabric grip mat? Why is she not using a strong grip mat? Here's the thing. There are standards in which you can use your mats for specific materials. We just kind of use the one that we want. True. I, however, am not going to use ever, unless it's super, super loved and almost dead, a strong grip mat with like crepe paper. Yeah. I'm not going to do that. Think about it. But you know. I will use basically any mat for yeah. HTV, for vinyl, for felt, for sturdier materials. We're, we're rule breakers around here. I, I mean, again, I, I feel like it's important to follow those types of rules when you are just starting out so that you can get an idea of how things work, what works for you. And then as you go, I, do what works for you the best. Kathy said, my sister and I spent two weeks visiting Tennessee from California and tried banana pudding every day at a different restaurant. This... This sounds like a like a viral YouTube video. You know Why on earth wouldn't you document this? Copper Cellar, which I don't know if there's one in Tennessee or not. There's one in Greenville, South Carolina. They have a white chocolate banana pudding. It's heaven. But my favorite banana pudding I've ever had at a store was at Tupelo Honey. 
Really? They have the best banana pudding. It is so good. Let's, let's weed this. Yeah, let me know, where was your favorite banana pudding in Tennessee? Rachel, we have a new uh, dessert place coming to Turkey Creek, Knoxville. It is called, I don't know what it's called. I'll have to look it up. It's a cobbler. Oh, I cobbler. love cobbler. You, you need to look it up. I'll, I'll show it to you if you can't find it. It is heavenly looking. So many different amazing flavors. Of course, peach, but... And did I tell you that I tried Micah's peach cobbler recipe she said? No. Uh, chef's kiss. Amazing. It was phenomenal. She talked it up, and she was not wrong. The peach cobbler factory is yes. what it's called. Yes. I'm really excited about it. So these oh. letters are teeny tiny at the bottom, but because it's heat transfer vinyl cut really well, I am going to have to grab like a pen pen tool in order to weed it because it's so little, uh, but it did really well. It right. says warm cobblers with ice cream and banana puddings, yeah. cinnamon rolls. Yes, yeah. but, but read the different cobbler flavors. There's apple walnut, blackberry peach, yeah. caramel apple, yeah. cherry cinnamon praline peach oh my that heaven. one sounds good honey apple that strawberry, one sounds good. mango peach regular peach sweet potato pecan i would eat that in a heartbeat blackberry strawberry peach they have cookies that are huge these look like they rival crumble uh, yeah 12 flavors of banana pudding i'm excited about this place they have shakes Gourmet cinnamon rolls. Becca, this place is... Legit. Legit. Does it say when it opens? No, it just says opening soon. Yeah. We keep well. coming, you know, because Nick's moving to Knoxville to go to dental school in the fall, and we keep coming up with new reasons to go to Knoxville. One of them is that taco place, and that's one of the other ones. What taco place? told you there's a new taco place i even told you the name of it yesterday you were too preoccupied with other things to pay attention to me i'm sorry it wasn't yesterday it was tuesday remind me it's it's something i can't pronounce oh well, maybe that's why i don't remember it probably <clears throat> i'm almost finished with this and then as soon as i'm finished with this i'm going to go ahead and preheat my little mini is it in turkey creek as well i don't know i don't i don't know that alan sent it to me Weeding the sky here. Is it called Condado? Yeah, 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 yeah. Is it Turkey Creek? Yep. I think so. So, do you all prefer to weed heat transfer vinyl or regular vinyl? Let me know. Heat transfer vinyl. R Rachel. Yes. Do you remember that, like, span of a year at Maker's Gonna Learn when we made everything with heat transfer vinyl yes. just to avoid. Literally everything. Weeding. Before we knew to burnish it down. Yeah. Burnishing made all the difference it in did. the world. Why didn't we think about it beforehand either? Like well, why? The what funny part doing? is we had burnishing tools and we never used them. Literally never no. used them. And I don't remember why I used it that one time. And I was like, this is a game changer. This is much easier. <laughs> Everyone is saying HTV. Not a single person has said adhesive vinyl. Okay. We feel you. We, we're like you. Completely. Yeah, we see you. Yeah. Okay. Got that weeded, and now we're ready to cut out the other piece. Um, so one thing that you might want to do with your felt, before you pull it up, do a little testy test make sure his cut if it hasn't cut you can resend it through the cutting it will cut beautifully but i've never had an issue with that setting and benzy fell in my rotary blade look at that cute little trophy well, it's gorgeous this is a good scrap i'm gonna save it um then we'll put this one down so another perk of using felt is that you get to clean your mat and there's nothing more satisfying than cleaning a mat that had felt on it. Nothing so more satisfying. True. This will cut out super quickly as well. 
I forgot to save my material settings, so now I have to go back in and tell it to do the rotary blade again. I hate when it does that. I do too. My fault. So, um, we can go ahead and preheat this little guy to the second heat setting. But, I'm going to preheat it. But I'm going to sew this and the banner together before I put the heat transfer vinyl Ooh, on Oh, yeah, it. that's smart. Yeah. I think I would do that too. Did it finish cutting already? Oh, no. <laughs> it just measured. <laughs> Somewhere I have... <clears throat> Kat said, Becca, you know darn well you'll probably never use that scrap of felt, but it's Benzy, so you got to say No, that. I will use that scrap of felt. I'm a... I'm a I don't use scraps of anything else. That's a good piece, Kat. Look. Do you find yourself with your Glowforge like becoming very creative about how you place things on your material? Because those those pieces for Glowforge, no matter where you buy them, they're pricey. They so are. I'm like, what? I just get, I'm gonna tilt it one degree so I can get it in there. <laughs> like, it has bit me in the butt before a couple of times, but. Melissa said, I really want to see Rachel use a sewing machine. I can, Melissa. She has. There's I a whole video. Can. She made a bib on a live for you all. I think I was pregnant. I don't you think were. I had Charlie yet. You were pregnant. So it was a while ago, but I enjoyed myself. Everything's intimidating before you do it. True. Okay. Uh, let me move all this stuff over. Look at this. I probably won't save this piece, Kat. Yes, yeah, I myself. think she's a goner. She's such a pretty piece, though. She's a goner. Sorry. You can make a kite out of that. Would you? A kite? Wow. Megan said, I'm so late. I hate when work interferes with my lives. I hate that, too. Me, too. That's so rude of them. So, I am doing, like I said, two and a half inches here. And there is an easy way to determine your two and a half inch. Um, so half of two and a half inches is 1.75 inches, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I am going to mark down to right here. No, half of, did I do that math wrong in my head? 1.75. No yes. 1.75. Okay. 1.75. Why is this not looking right in my head? One and a half, seven five, two and a half. I'm not sure. It looks wrong in my head. It's not. 1.75. I don't think it needs to be 1.75. That's pretty big, but that's what we're doing. Um, so I've marked down to 1.75 and I'm just going to fold this over like this so that I know that it's even all the way around. The other way you can do that is just to fold it down and measure it. <laughs> but we'll go ahead and grab some clippy clips here. Clip this down. You can also use, um, your favorite... Sewing pins. 1.25 is what it should have been. Oh, yeah, you're right. That's what I get for trying to do math on a live. I, I'm just saying what they're saying. It's true. I kept thinking one point, uh, that doesn't look right, because it wasn't right. Thank you all. That's much better. You're like, that's what it should be. Wowzers. Okay. Did you tell her you wanted your nails short or did she do it by herself? She knows I like them short. Okay. This last time she just left them a little bit longer. And the longer she leaves them, the more they break. Yeah, yeah. I had to change my microphone on Sunday at church. And it was like right in the middle of a song. I changed the battery on it. And so I was trying to do it really quick and broke a nail right in the middle of it. I had to wait a week and a half to get it fixed because I'm not about to go back in the middle. No, no. Okay. So I have a contrasting color on here. It's this, um, it's almost like the Carhartt brown color, right? I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors right now, but I think it will look really good against the screen and it will complement this. So it will kind of 
flow in with this. Love it. Use, use the exact same color if you want to. It's totally up to you. If you're not very comfortable with sewing yet, you don't want a contrasting color. FYI, you want something that will blend in. Um, I am just going to do probably a quarter of an inch, maybe an eighth of an inch actually, and maybe do a double. Ooh, I'll do an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch so that there's a double line. That will look really cool. Yeah, so I'm just going to sew right here, follow it along. Like I said, don't have to roll that hem, which is handy dandy. You are going to want to backstitch for those of you. Do we have any first time sewers? Let me know because I can skip this. Well, you may have people watching later who are not. You're going to backstitch. A backstitch means that you're going to sew forward like two or three stitches. You push this little fun button that looks like a U-turn. Backstitch two or three stitches and then go forward. And that kind of locks in those stitches. It knots it without knot knotting it uh, so that it won't go anywhere on you. Right, how are your eyebrows? I haven't even looked at them. They're phenomenal. Do you love them? They're a little itchy like all tattoos get. Yeah. Um, sleeping is harder than you think. Really? Not to take that that ointment off of them. I'm a I'm a belly you, sleeper. You don't sleep on your stomach though, right? I'm a belly sleeper. Oh, I thought you said okay. I'm sorry. I'm I didn't a, hear that. So I'm basically yeah. like face in pillow. I'm the same way. Night. So I keep getting up in the middle of the night and put, putting more ointment on them. But they're phenomenal. I'm so excited. For those of you that don't know, I got them microbladed. It was my birthday present to me. So tell them about microblading. So what it is, is like a scalpel, like a surgical scalpel dipped in a special blend of ink that matches your uh, hair color. There's a lot more science that goes into it than that, but that's basically the gist of it. And they make, the person makes tiny little cuts that look like strands of hair in your skin after mapping your eyebrows. So like every single eyebrow is different for the person because they measure your face and they, you know, all, it took forever. You know those like chalk lines in construction? She had like a chalk line for my face. There were so many lines on my face. It took her double the time to just map out where my eyebrows would go than it even did to actually microblade them, which I think was really neat. But uh, they didn't hurt at all. She, they did not shave off your real ones, cat. They leave them there and just do it underneath your real hairs, and then they'll shape your eyebrows if you have some unruly hairs that are outside of the guided lines. But it was a really easy process. I mean, one it done for about two years, I'd say. We did permanent cosmetics at the salon that I used to work yeah. for, and it was like a tattoo gun. And so I don't know why I thought microblading was with the tattoo gun because the name in itself is blading. I, I don't know. but So that was interesting to me yeah. to find that out. Yeah. Side note, I didn't even mention it's so important. You can't sew with shoes oh, on. Oh, God. You cannot, I have one shoe that's on and, and one, one that's, off. that's off. You cannot sew with shoes on. You can't You're, feel the pedal as well. It'll be an is. instant fail. Instant fail? Instant fail. Oh, okay. My mom sews in tennis shoes. I don't know how she does it. Is my mom on? I haven't seen her. Mom, I ran off and forgot that list of fabrics she told me about yesterday. Because, you know, yesterday you were there. Um, send it to me. Send me a picture of it. Yeah, I don't think she's here. Okay. Sorry. Ma'am. Look how cute. Go to the... Oh, are you overhead right now? I am now. See the double? Can you see it? That's adorable. It looks really cute. I love it. And I love the contrasting color. My back stitch is like bunching up on me. So I'm going to have to work with the tension on it later. That's another video. Um, it's interesting. I may also have to put more thread in my bobbin because I tried the chains out there. Let me make sure that this is symmetric and that I'm not putting it down on the wrong side. Okay. Okay. Put this here. And you can pin this on if you want to or you can use like large sewing clips if you have those that will fit in. In fact, I have some somewhere that we got from Timu. 
Do you want me to go try and find I them? I think I know exactly where they are. Let me grab them. You gotta put your shoes back on. Yeah, I do. Or well, that would be weird. It's like a hobble on limp, you know, with one. Yeah, yeah, no. Kat said, I'm a child of the 80s where thin brows were the thing and I've never recovered. Well, you know, Kat, my senior picture, I barely had an eyebrow at all because I also, it, in the early 2000s, it was also a thing yeah. to not have any. Okay, so this can go on like this. Oh. Um, anyway, mine, mine grew back. Yeah. Now now it's those really big ones that you brush up. Becca hates those. I, I do too. It's I cannot stand pee. those. My pet pee. Choose anywhere you want to start. I normally start in a corner of some sort, like a point, instead of right in the middle. It tends to just look better. And then I'm going to do probably an eighth of an inch um, all the way around. You can do a quarter if you want, but I want closer to the edge um, so that it doesn't interfere with my heat transfer vinyl. However, because I made it a quarter of an inch out, like the offset was quarter of an inch, it should be fine. And Micah, yeah, we'll definitely, we like to mix it up every week and do something different, but we're definitely going to be breaking out our sewing machine again. I mean, we, we do a mix of all kinds of things. So yeah, absolutely. You'll see sewing videos here and there from us. Ugh. I can't decide where I want to start. Okay. I'm going to start right here. Now I'm going to do this slowly because it, especially down toward the bottom of the trophy, um, it is going I'm gonna have to start and stop a lot. When you get to the corners, you want to stop. And my machine stops with the needle down in the fabric so that you can lift Rotate your foot it. up and pivot without it moving. So that's really nice. I think most of the newer machines do that. Uh, if it doesn't, make sure that before you lift your foot up, you place, like you manually make your needle go down. Rachel, I got a joke for you. Are you ready for it? As ready as I'll ever be. What did the horse say when it fell? Let me think. What is it? Help, I've fallen and I can't giddy up. the radio the morning corny you know the radio that i listen to in the morning um anyway fallon is on this joke kick right her jokes suck <laughs> they're terrible yeah and so i like i've been going along with it and i'm like oh ha 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 and then the other day i said fallon you know that jokes are supposed to be funny right she said are you saying my jokes aren't funny? Oh, oh, oh. Are you saying you don't like my jokes? I'm like, baby, listen, I like that you are trying. You should keep trying. I'm just trying to give you some constructive criticism. She's so funny, though, because you can never really tell if she's serious or not, yeah, like yeah. seriously offended, or if she's like, yeah, mom, you're right. My joke does suck, but I'm just going to give yeah. you hell over it. Yeah, it's quite funny. The cool thing about this machine too is, you, I think you can do it for a lot of machines. I think you, I think every machine I've ever done you can do. You can change the speed on it. So if you tend to be heavy footed and you need it to be slower, which is what happens with me, I'm just gonna like all the way down to turtle speed, yeah, so that oh, I don't the accidentally the turtle speed. Like on the lawnmower where yes. it has like the turtle and the bunny and the turtle speed that I would get in massive trouble for not putting it on when yeah. I would mow the yard when I was a kid. Yeah. I was like, look, if you don't want me to do the bunny speed, then don't ask me to mow. I don't want to mow anyway. <laughs> it's bunny or nothing. Yeah. Bunny or nothing. Take it or leave it. We didn't have to do a lot of chores growing up. We really didn't. But we had one thing that we had to do. We had like two acres of land. And uh, Anna and I would have to mow every other week. So she would do one week and I would do one week on the push mower and then the boys would have to do all the trim and weedy work like alternate so fred and ben were or fred and anna were together me and ben were together and uh they'd run out there i'm telling dad i'm telling dad because we you were like, like do it yeah. tell him you tell him 
And then the other thing that we had to do, which I still to this day hate doing, is empty the dishwasher. Oh my gosh. And here's why I hate emptying the dishwasher. My mother hates loading the dishwasher. And so I don't know how in the world she packs a dishwasher the way that she packs it. I, you could not, we could probably get every dish in our entire house in the dishwasher. And so when we would empty the dishwasher, it would take a solid 30 minutes to empty it and put everything up. And so I hated it, hated it the with a passion. The only thing that I hate about emptying the dishwasher is when the dishes are wet or they're yeah, like you a have to dry them with all. like the puddle of water on the bottom of it. Yeah. I hate that. Agreed. I have a dishwasher now, still haven't ever used it, but by gosh, I've got one. <laughs> I don't have any dishwashing tabs. I need to get some. <laughs> That's sad. One of my friends in high school thought that you could put regular soap in a dishwasher. Yeah. That was a bad idea. Yeah. It bubbles up everywhere. Okay, this turned out cute. Look, look at her. She's a cutie there. Now I'm ready to put this on. This looks so professional. Thank Look you. Look at this. I oh my gosh. That. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Again, this is already preheated. We're just gonna put this on. I start in the middle. And work my way out. You're looking for bubbles. Bubbles in between your transfer sheet and your vinyl, which means that it has separated and done exactly what it's supposed to. You can use like a clamshell press or your large easy press too. If you do that, then you're looking at, I don't even remember, Rachel, is it like 30 seconds at 350 yeah, something or something? Like yeah. Which for those of you who are thinking about switching over to like a mini easy press or something like that, or just adding it to your craft room, in my head, it was so hard to get used to the fact that this doesn't have to sit here for 30 seconds in each set in, in each spot in order for it to transfer blew my mind could not deal with it it's a whole new world if i think about it too much it still doesn't make sense same but i just go with it because it's too. never failed me and no. i'm like let's just yeah so this is separating i like to remove it and then i especially with pieces like this because there's a bunch of them i always and i, I don't know why I like to grab like a Teflon sheet or even that clear plastic sheet again, place it over it and I apply more heat. I just, I just, that's just what I like to do. I want it to be good and adhered. Honestly, be, in my opinion, with heat transfer vinyl, it's best to use a clamshell press if you want to not be able to feel like the edges of the heat transfer vinyl and stuff like that, especially on shirts. If you use a heat transfer or a clamshell press, then it puts so much pressure on it that it kind of becomes one with the fabric. It's true. It's, it's true. so good. It's I, impressive. It is. I thought it was a crock of crap, to be honest, and that it wouldn't make a difference, but it makes a massive difference. So that's finished. And then I'm just going to slide my little dowel rod in here. Let me trim this right here. And you could, if you wanted to, drill little holes in here. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to tie this on here a bunch of times. This thing's adorable. Thank you. Just kind of go like this a million times. A million being like six. And tie it on there like this. And then decide how long do you want it? Probably more like that. Do your first little wrap right here and knot it off and we're ready. That's cute. If you have a sick sense of humor like me, this would be a cute Mother's Day gift. It like sure if Wayne gave be. me this, I would have died. It would have been hysterical for Mother's Day. Look how cute. Look how cute she is. It's adorable. I love that, Becca. The green is the best. That is a beautiful green. So many fun things that we just learned or just went over. I love taking so many different techniques 
and putting them together in one project. In fact, I think maybe I should challenge myself to come up with a project that has like painting and heat transfer vinyl and felt like all of these different elements. That could be fun. UV resin has to be one. Oh. Throw that in the mix. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, anyway, I, I just love being able to do that. If you love projects like this, if you love crafting, join our flock. We have an amazing flock here. We do stuff like this all the time. In addition to this, we also do product reviews, product comparisons, craft fails for you all, how to troubleshoot stuff because we do have craft fails. Um, and so the membership here is sort of just priceless. In addition to the cut file collection that we have on our website that we are adding to, uh, you get the courses, the free courses that come along with the membership. You get access to our private Facebook group. You get member only content, member only podcast, free commercial use license and so much more. So grab that link that Rachel is throwing for you and use the code 20OFL. OFF for $20 off and become a part of our flock. Craft is finished. Do you all want to chat for a few? Because that only took, oh, it was an hour. <laughs> that <laughs> only hour. took, oh, it was it an was hour. It was a whole hour, but we'll talk for a few minutes. Yes, yeah, smash the thumbs up for these ladies. Thank you so much. It's free to do that. It's free to lock it, free to subscribe to our channel, and it all helps us out. Okay, dumb question. Do I need to buy an embroidery machine or are there machines that can do both? So I don't have, I have both. So if you have one that does both weigh in, my understanding is that if you get a machine that does embroidery, it's not as um, customizable. Okay. That's my understanding. I could be wrong. So if you have one, weigh in. You're welcome, Roberta. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Crystal. Okay, Diana says her embroidery machine is, is for both. Diana, can you tell us what kind you have um, and share that information with Ms. Nikki? Um, Viking Epic and love it. It sews and embroiders, Kathy says. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, the awesome illustrator course. Thank you, Scott. Um, I don't see our new friend here, but she is not an Oak and Land member, but purchased the illustrator course for her daughter's purchased it for Mother's Day. So I can't so wait to sweet. see what she comes up with, what, what um, type of cut files she learns to create. I love teaching cut files and I love illustrator and I love having students who are successful in their own graphic design journey. So Thank you, Scott, for reminding us of that. We do have 60 people watching and only 46 likes. So if you are watching and have not liked, please go ahead and like that. Amanda also, said, can we please get stickers or magnets in the flock shop? There are stickers and magnets in the flock shop. Go check them out. The link is down below. Um, yeah, there are some. They're probably not in every design. If what, what specific design do you want them in? Let me know. And if it's not in there, I'll add it for you. Absolutely. Um, if you are not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, it's free to do that if you would like to be a part of the flock, but it is not financially doable for you right now to join our subscription. It is free to like our YouTube page or subscribe to our YouTube page here. So hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you know when we post content and when we go live. I just have a basic sewing machine right now, but not a lot of space okay yeah um beth has a brother dream machine and it does everything maybe i need to get a new machine i've never used my embroidery machine i bought all the stuff to do it right the stabilizer and all that stuff and my golden doodle chewed it up and i said this is a sign. I mean, it's been like three years and I finally dive in to do it and she chews it up. I'm just not supposed to do it. Um, anyway, are there any questions or is there anything that you all want to chat about? If not, then we are going to skedaddle. Um, what's a good beginner sewing machine to start learning with? The brother. A lot of the brothers, this is an XR9550. There's like the brother runway. Um, and they're all very, very similar. We have in our Amazon storefront, which is linked down below too, there's a sewing section and you can click on that. We have uh, a sewing machine posted there. I think it's actually this one. I love this sewing machine. I kind of want mine at home to die so that I have an excuse to buy this one for my house. 
You're kind of hoping yours will die. Well, only be, I mean, it's older, literally older than you are, and it, it weighs like a million pounds, and it has a lot of tension issues that I have to work through, and it likes to break my thread a lot because of the tension issues. It's just, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, I have a singer heavy duty. So much good information here. You all are so helpful. I love it. Absolutely love it. I'm going to stick around for just a couple more seconds to make sure there aren't any other questions. Thank you for that question, Daisy. It's a great question. Um, I hope you all have a wonderful Mother's Day. Yeah, me too. Enjoy it. Rachie right, went to the zoo yesterday. What did Charlie think of the zoo? He loved it. Now, we went when he was really little. Yeah, I don't remember. He was it, like right? four months old. Now, the only issue is he's in between that stage where he's running amok, but he also doesn't listen quite well. So he wanted to sprint around the zoo, and that just couldn't happen. So. You need a leash for that kid. He's fast. He is, he is fast. He is a quick fella. Like, he would be gone in a minute just running. So, Rachel, they have these things. I saw it at Walmart yesterday. It was a cocoa melon. I don't know if he would do it or not, if you'd actually have to tie it to him. It's this, like, handle thing that goes on the stroller, and then they hold the other part of it. Okay. You may have... I got to be honest, before I had children, I had all of these, like, I would nevers, and one of them was that I would never put a leash, put a on, leash on my child. Beck, it had to be leashed. They just don't know about runners, the people that say that, because I, I was the same way. I'm like, why would they put their kid on a leash? Yeah, like, just tell them it. no. But at one, no one-year-old, he makes hard and fast decisions like putting his race cars in the toilet. Like, yeah. Yeah. you can't trust a kid that puts his race cars in the toilet. Or licks that spot in the floor every or time Or licks the floor. Now, and here's the thing. Like, do I want to deal with the judgment from people who don't know anything? Or do I want to watch my child get hit by a car? I'm going to pick the first one, please. Yeah. I'm going to pick the first yeah. one. Yeah. I. Um, we had this backpack that was like a monkey thingy. And yes, 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 yes. Strap yes. Straps on him. Yep. I was sitting on my couch last night, Becca, minding my own business. And Charlie is running around the house and he's in the bathroom. And he has a passy in his mouth so i'm like okay so i don't hear anything because i'm trying to hear while trying to let him be independent and not get into trouble well lenny has taken the move decent lenny's done okay but he hasn't quite adjusted to being let out on a leash every time again so i'm sitting there minding my business and charlie comes staggering back into the living room and he drops something and i was like did you, did you drop your passy bud he gets down on the floor he picks it up and he brings it to me it's a dog turd he brings me a dog turd. So I start, fr I am running, I'm screaming. Charlie has dog turd on him and in his hand. So I scoop Charlie up, run around, find a Walmart bag, pick up all of the dog turds because Lenny's not used to, he's, he's having a rough transition. Um, but yeah, Charlie was in there and he brought me, he brought me poop. And that was, I think, only one of many experiences I'm going to have like this. So needless to say, Charlie had bath time a little early last night because he brought me a turd. <laughs> so I'm just thankful he didn't put the turd in his mouth. I am extremely thankful to the Lord God above that he did not put that turd in his mouth. I speak from personal experience. They, um, they survive turds in mouths. I'm sure they do, but I, that would have and been honestly, too much for me last night. Um, my child who ate a dog turd from the yard, uh, it rarely gets sick. He's my healthiest child. Yeah. Um, I had two runners, my boys, and didn't leash them. We set up some rules and consequences, only a few incidences that required correction. Yeah, Stacy. I mean, in general, I feel the same way. Like, if we're at my, my parents' house or something, and they're touching something they're not supposed to or whatever, my, my parents want to move it. And I'm like, no, 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 they just need to obey. Yeah, they have to adapt um, to your environment. And in general, I'm the same way. Like, they just need to obey. Because yeah. one thing that we do, it's oh, first-time obedience. It's first-time quickly completely with happy heart however if i'm in a if i'm at neyland stadium with 102,000 fans um i just can't test whether or not they're going to obey the first time or that my child's not going to get He's not gonna, yeah, yeah yeah um yeah no beckett was probably charlie's age he was a li maybe 18 months and we're in the front yard and he's just playing right I mean, we had a great dame yeah. and a chihuahua and some different stuff at the time and um he picks something up. Mama, mama, 
And I was like, yeah, yeah. And I'll look at it. And he was like, oh. When he got it closer to me, and I'm like, what is that, bud? It's a <gasps> turk. I mean, I was, I was dying. I was mad at Lenny for pooping in the house because he never does that. Um, and then, I, of course, I was not at all mad at Charlie. There was no, I was no, never mad at the baby because he brought me. He was like, Mom, look at this. But the whole, the whole thing was just insane. Yeah. Humbling. A very humbling experience for me. Disgusting. Disgusting. Boys, what are you going to do? I mean, boy, it, seriously, boys, I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty gross, too. Yeah. I feel, I don't know. I feel like they're wired different. Boys, and they're just wired different. I love I, that. I Man, see, I love a little boy. I see Charlie making decisions, and I'm like, only a boy would make these choices. I swear. Yeah. Just the daredevil, no fear, no consequences type of choices. I'm like, buddy, buddy, no. Yeah. It's it's good, though. Wouldn't trade it for the world. I'd, I'd have him bring me a turd every night if that's what he wanted to do. Yeah. Ah. I do love him, though. Gosh. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for being here with us to craft and talk about turds. Uh, Sorry, we- that was my fault. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We'll see you all next week live. Check out the schedule. It's not up yet, but we will be updating it. And we'll have a flock talk for you all Saturday. Uh, member, member only. only member only member only flock talk have a fantastic day everyone we'll see you later